Hello everyone, come clean here. Welcome back to another episode of Science in the Skylands, the series where I use my expertise as a high school science teacher to talk about scientific topics in the context of the Skylands games. In this video I will explain the tree of life here on Earth using characters from the Skylands games. Let's get right into it. I might as well add the disclaimer right away that I won't be talking about the entire tree of life. That will be quite a lengthy video. Instead we are focusing on vertebrae, or animals with a spine. The characters from the Skylines games are obviously creatures of fantasy, but they are certainly inspired by real animals, which makes them very useful for this topic. Several million years ago, no vertebrae lived on land, but we did have fish in the seas. The animals we call fish are usually cartilaginous fish like sharks and stingrays, and bony fish like pikes and perches. As strange as it may sound, bony fish are actually more related to mammals than what they are to cartilaginous fish. Terrafin is a great example of a shark-inspired character. He has hands and feet instead of fins, he is a sand shark after all. I'm not sure why he has gills since they are used to breathe underwater and not under sand. I won't get too deep into the realism of the characters, but I do that in other videos in case you're interested. Cartilaginous fish have skeletons made up of mainly cartilage, like the structures in our ears for example, but bony fish have skeletons made up of the same bony structure like us mammals. Gill grunt, riptide and punk shock are all fish inspired scanners be it with some creative freedom maybe. Fun fact, bony fish use muscles to pump water over the gills for breathing, but cartilaginous fish don't. Instead, most species need to swim to keep the constant supply of fresh water over their gills. If they stop, they will die. Okay, I'm not sure how funny that is, but yeah, yeah, let's move on. A subgroup to bony fish are lobe finned fish. These are the animals that gradually became more and more adapted to life partially on land and eventually gave rise to the amphibians. Amphibians include frogs, toads, and salamanders, and like the name suggests, they live partly on land and partly on water. For example, frog babies are called tadpoles, and they are fully developed gills that they lose once they reach adulthood. There is an astonishing absence of amphibians in the Skylanders rosters. Zap is a water dragon, which is not a real animal, but the way he looks and behaves in games suggests that he has about the same way of life as an amphibian on Earth. Now we move on to the next part of the evolutionary tree and the group called reptiles. This term is a bit misleading since it refers to certain physical traits or way of life rather than actual evolutionary relationships. In this tree of life for example, the animals we refer to as reptiles are highlighted and they are scattered all over the place. In biology, reptiles are referred to as a paraphyletic group. A group with a biological classification but where the members are not decided by actual evolutionary relationships. Let's take a look at some reptile inspired skylanders. So here we have Warnado, a turtle skylander. He is sort of similar to an actual turtle and he has spikes on his back that looks like those of a snapping turtle which is an actual animal here on earth. Even though the spikes are way too big. He also has external ears that real turtles don't have. This ear looks like it's designed to emphasize that Warnado is part of the air element rather than something that makes sense from an evolutionary perspective. We also have one alligator skylander in Snapshot. My figure's weapon is a bit messed up. Snapshot is a bipedal fantasy version of an alligator with a body that is very much out of proportion. And he also has these horns that neither alligators nor crocodiles have. Fun fact about reptiles. If you take a look at Snapshot's mouth, we can see that he has no cheeks. No reptiles has, actually. It's a trait unique to us mammals. The purpose of cheeks is mainly to keep the food in our mouth when we chew, and reptiles generally don't chew their food. Crocodiles and alligators, for example, drag their prey into the water, drown them, and swallow chunks of them whole. Now you have another great conversation starter for the next party you go to. Okay, let's say goodbye to Snapshot. See you later, alligator. Oh, sorry, let's not do that. We also have another certain group of reptiles that came to dominate the Earth for several million years. I am of course talking about the dinosaurs that came in several different sizes and variations until almost all of them went extinct about 66 million years ago. Slobbertooth is a dinosaur-like skylander that looks a bit fantastical but he has horns and armor plating reminiscent of those of actual dinosaurs. 
Horns and armor are of course present in many animal groups and they are actually made up of keratin, the same protein that makes up hair and fingernails. There are more dinosaur skylines, for example Tri-Tip and Dinorang. Both of these, as cool as they are designed, look from a biological perspective like sentient caricatures of actual dinosaurs. And Chopper looks like a T-Rex head with extremely tiny limbs attached to it. The word dinosaur can be more or less directly translated into terrible lizard, which is a bit misleading since dinosaurs are not lizards. I use my kids toys to explain one of the most prominent differences. Lizards have their limbs protruding from the side of their body, and dinosaurs have their legs beneath their body. The lizard's legs give them stability among other things, but it does put a limit on the weight they can support, so a lizard could never be as big as the biggest dinosaur. As you may know, we still have dinosaurs alive today in the form of birds. Many dinosaurs had feathers, probably to help them keep themselves and their eggs warm, and small dinosaurs eventually evolved the ability to use the feathers to glide between trees and eventually for actual flight. There are a lot of bird skyliners, and while they do have many traits associated with birds, many of them are six-limbed fantasy creatures with arms, legs and bird wings on their backs. In real life, the wings of birds are analogous to the four limbs of mammals. Speaking of mammals, let's finish this video off by talking about them. Mammals can be considered the dominant animal group on Earth. Not in sheer numbers nor number of species, but when it comes to how outspread they are and the vast amount of so-called ecological niches they occupy. There are three main groups of mammals. Monotremes, where the only extant species are the platypus and different echidnas. Marsupials, including for example kangaroos and koalas, and finally placental mammals. There is no shortage of placental mammal representation among the Skylanders. We have wolves, cats, primates, skunks and other undefined species. How do I know they are mammals? Because they have fur, and if an animal has fur, it is a mammal. There are however mammals that don't have fur. Whales, for example, since a smooth skin have been selected for as it works well with their fully aquatic lifestyle. The blowhole on the top of the head used to be the nose in early whale ancestors. The closest living relatives to whales and dolphins and so forth are actually hooved animals. That was all I had for this video. Click on this playlist for more Science in the Skylands videos and consider subscribing for weekly gaming content. Thank you very much for watching. My name is Kam Clean and I will see you next time. Take care.